na casa onde vou, sou bom na open mind. Welcome para uh, esta nku a chunem para me viajar aqui na Rio Bo Aruba Superstation. Um, como tá me riba no Facebook channel de Aruba Superstation, esta nku open mind Aruba. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bom na bo happy hour novo. A riba cha pierna. Una ku um, no sa uh, panel panel de thought leaders, de open minders. A we no chita bai. Um, so tour si mang. Si ko tiri just cinco shows si mita hera. Um, una ku right? Just cinco show. Just cinco. Di just cinco. Just cinco. Buenas <risa> noches, Diego. Diego. Diego, man, happy birthday. Manera po sa sa tour si Mamo sabi ko tema ng aktual ya si es na kyan tire conversation ni ba mesa dialoga am um, riba diferente tema ng kuta spill of the nos comunidad como ta riba plataforma internacional ya si mga aki sigur um, no tanata diferente sta pa me viaja po ta chuna riba nos channel in no stream si pudi un comentario fu a fun pregunta feel free pa comment below di um a live stream aki na nang ino so pa over the jeep later during nos programming is pudi un pregunta mas direct po sam para mandes aki via mi whatsapp na 564 jesun cerro 2 y nos awak has nos best at least pa contesta e pregunta aki On that note, el tema de hoy si man ah, kita un tema de que controversial pa comunidad sigur riba epita baranca duche aquí nana um, legaliza droga of not, entonces de caso de legalize or not. Tengo alguna pregunta que no sé qué um, pasar riba ya más cu claro. Um, e guerra um, contra droga ta en mi misma manera. Ta una pregunta nang de con alcohol con prescription drugs si ¿sí ta legal está un brazo tan grande, uh -huh. um, de caso que está impacto también grande, que impacto lo porta para que la industria de marihuana, para que la economía de un país, entonces vamos a ver específicamente Aruba. Sí, ese es el es el un motivo no para que conozcamos ese show hoy noche también, pues sobre el debate sí. está existiendo en Aruba también hoy, desde que desde que nos tiene un gobierno nuevo, um, tiene un parlamentario, um, tiene un parlamentario uh -huh. um, ya yeah, de un parlamento que está en el país que lobby para uh, legalizar marihuana medicinal y no está para el de recreacional pero está para el hobby de medicinal y para en el uh, comenzar el proceso de um, um, legalizar marihuana medicinal en Aruba que motivo para que conozca aquí es para papi over the subject a buenas noches también buenas noches Bianca, buenas noches Diego Welcome. Um, An interesting topic. Okay. Si. I thought you were going to start the show with the with the Peter Tosh uh, song going. <laughs> Legal. <the> <laughs> Don't create this. No. You think I'm young? Bosa. Bosa, mita hay un subject um Yeah, esta manera, esta manera um na moda o ano, mas eu vou ter que parar na América, mas eu vou ter que parar na estado, quase 20 estados na América acaba está fazendo um, moves nang. obviamente o estado está legalizado, mas não está legal federalmente que men, yeah. não tem um problema chiquito em nada com toda a placa que eu guardo um, a balas, que men, toda a balas tem que cobrar a toda a benemento de eh, marihuana pues hay una recreacional y medicinal uh -huh. diferente estado tiene diferentes reglas obviamente pero pero tu replaca um, de belasting no por guardo depositar en el banco para sobra que el banco está federal y el ley no federal no te permite para depositar nada que también de um, de de un sorto de droga que está clasificada como ilegal que men no tiene un problema que no tiene Cero de cash. A lot of cash money. And Hopi, a lot of un, un, un montaña de cash, lot. pero no no puedo depositar. Que me está acabando pasar aquí con una con una vez de los ojos de los ojos. Pero pero está está interesante para Wax y mané. Ahora me toca trempang me toca Wax con el Colorado de día con la comisión para vos dos punto seis billón de dólar a guardo general para economía de estado de Colorado. Uh, me sé cuánto año se está. Me sé que está cuatro o cinco años. ¿Cuánto año pasó? Do, 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 do we know? I'm, check. I'm not sure. Let's check. But, it, but, but you were saying uh, that this is a, a topic that's hot globally, but I think it's, it's every, every 10 years or so we get the same type of topics going around and they, 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 they overlap, no? Entonces, 
uh, right now when people talk about legalizing drugs everybody immediately talks about cannabis or uh, that's it that's basically it. it's yeah, yeah. Basically. cannabis uh, recreational medicinal that's what people yeah. like the, the current discourse is going towards but uh, yeah. if we look at what's going on through history in the u.s they had prohibition with alcohol at some point in time at mm. some point in time uh the war was, was looking at the, mm -hmm. at the freud the the, the netflix show mm -hmm. and this guy was always on cocaine always every single day he was yeah. in, on top of this thing yeah yeah and that even was heroin to be, even heroin was, was legal, legal, legal no? even heroin was legal coffee at some point in time in history was illegal Mm -hmm. So we have all these different types of things that, you know, mm. we, we, we somehow because we just live in the moment, we, we think they're static, mm -hmm. but they, it moves around. no? See. And then we just have to figure yeah. out what is it that people are talking about? Why did we make a law at some point? What should be regulated? What shouldn't be regulated? No, I, say I, read, I, read, a funny, I read a funny piece today that said it depends who's using it. Depending on mm -hmm. who's using it and, and what period of time, it becomes legal or illegal. Because if it was older white men doing uh, cocaine or any other drugs, it would probably legal, be legal, just like alcohol is. Yep. It depends who's using the drugs. migrate pa ba a rails ng na America, those, those so they, the, a the lot of immigra Chinese immigrants went to the U.S. and they were the workers on those railways. Yeah. And when they were tired at the end of the day of working like 17, 20 hours, I don't know how many hours, and they were tired, they would lay back at, at, uh, at their house and smoke opioids, smoke opium. And uh, all of a sudden, they uh, started uh, so people were people like, "Oh my God, these are what gonna, are these, are these they're things? gonna turn all our um, all our people into uh, opi opium addicts. All our mem women are gonna be turned into opium addicts." And that fear was what started the first uh, um, criminalization of of drugs in the United States. And after that. The same thing happened with marijuana when the when the Mexicans and the and the um, Afro Americano started using a lot of weed and uh, they started this whole um, uh, 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 reefer madness uh, campaign. Reefer madness Teaching was also the mm -hmm. reefer madness was also the motivation to s start criminalizing uh, marijuana. So depending on who was using the drugs, yep. obviously in different countries, different different reasons, but in the United States, depending on who was using the drugs, is when they started the campaigns to, to scare people into thinking that they're gonna, the people are gonna lose their minds if they smoke marijuana. They also, they called it reefer madness. Mm. And the ones with the opium was that they were gonna turn all the, all the women into um, opium addicts and people got scared. And that's the reason why they started uh, making all these drugs illegal, yep. categorizing them into um, illegal drugs. Into their yeah. different schedules uh, in the convention. Uh, I'm yeah. yeah. uh, 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 trend awora kina ng mas kunung katapos sobra awok yanti hopi mas research kuto wardo hasi arriba e effecto ng in realidad. Mita kira tempo 60s, 70s, 80s kuto tasiguro ng the discus fever mes ko hopi yata activamente participatory usando hopi hopi droga tur tipo di droga nanta ta home base li pa un persona di un reaction kunan awak and they make an assumption nanta ti un research um hopi mas extenso pa ko esa ki si bo aka wokin nanta hopi um ti hopi otro tipo di generacion nan ku ta kom vor a wokin nan ku ta hasi mas research ku ta bis okay bo invece um ba pa de ka ba ka breaken mit mirando un un Netflix series di um the ayahuasca. But mm -hmm. yeah. it's interesting because in the ayahuasca, in principle, it's illegal. Depending on what you use it for travel, you can use it for travel, you can use it for travel, you can use it for travel. Internationally, it's illegal and it's, yeah. you know, it's one of those yes. drugs that is listed in exactly. international conventions and so on. Yeah. Exactly. But and that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, it's a by hope deep a uh, uh, party a uh, uh, hallucinogens uh, ayahuasca uh, psychedelics, uh, psychedelics. Right. no but it it all goes to the <coughs> same and so <coughs> in the 60s if you if you see you know what's the difference between now and then i think back then they also did a lot of research that mm -hmm. back then there uh, but 
Yeah, Which but was there was no there's, control, where, there was no right? funding, Diego. It, no, it, the it problem is control. as soon as they mm-hmm. as soon as they categorized them as being illegal, it was hands off for everybody because if you do it, you were participating in something illegal. So then yeah. you automatically put a brick to sort of the research. There's always somebody benefiting from something being stopped or yeah. not, right? So in that time, yeah. you know, there was a lot of uh, fear of communism, a lot of fear of uh, people revolting <laughs> against the government. You know, the, uh, there the government was really protective of the economic system that, that it had because there was a yeah. threat, right? So there was a, mm. you know... A, but this a is an economic threat. system unto itself too, Diego. No, yeah, but <laughs> not, not at, the, at that moment, you yeah. know, it was just nascent. So it yeah. wasn't, that the, you know, the business behind it was yeah. nascent, right? So yeah. it didn't get to that, uh, it was quashed at the, at the beginning. So, yeah, I, I sometimes, I'm, I'm, I'm not a drug user at all. I, you know, I, I, I see this and I see that the conversation on... Diego doesn't even drink, man. Right, <laughs> Some <one>, beer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, mm. I see, I see the, 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 the conversation where people go on this is very emotional. Super right. emotional. And it usually tends to be a lot of like, no, just let us have what we want to have. Uh, yeah, but we're grown-ups, Diego. We are supposed to be allowed to do what we think we want to do. It's yeah, our bodies. But we got to protect I the mean, vulnerable too, no? Which vulnerable? There's there's kids. There's, yeah, you know, but there's, I'm talking about being. A, a, yeah, but we have laws. Make good decisions for Dude, themselves. we have laws about alcohol. People can drink uh, in every country. There's a legal age for drinking alcohol. All right. so Why can't there be a legal age for doing whatever you want to do? So it's not I mean, just legalizing it it's regulation. It's you know, <laughs> how, what do you do? You know, depending on uh, mm-hmm. on what, how much harm can something harm to uh, can cause to somebody okay. else? Lagami bisabasaki. They tried. Illig- making alcohol illegal in the states and it backfired enormously on them. Do you and in, in, uh, in the states it's illegal to drink alcohol till you're till you're 21. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many kids in the states do you think wait till they're 21 to drink alcohol? No. I don't think they wait. Uh, no. <laughs> no. They Let's probably see, drink yeah. more than anybody else. Yeah. And because it's prohibited, not because it's because it's that it has it's that taboo. it has that oh we're doing that something that, that we're not supposed to be doing that's what it is it's like Correct. you know it's exciting it's when you make things you can't do this you can't do that you make it exciting yeah, people want to people want to teenagers wanna, are a little bit uh, I, I experienced yeah. that different humans i mean if we're going to be open and candid about it um bibando aqui nam pro me como estudia fo uno mach di huma Bilanti bo mama Mary Jane. <laughs> Mary Jane. Sasi ma hebi se no pala pala. Bo ma Mary Jane. Dus oké, kijk daar, ku bot bij haar. Ze toch pas op no mag. Maar ora no is me jaga Holanda, ku tota like free for all. Mary Jane no ta jeli ke mas, bi Mary Jane doi. En tota mes un, en tota mes un. Exciting. Yeah, I don't know. Of the peer pressure of home e idea ku bo. I don't know, mi no posplica, pero si ese ta met un element, no? Ku hopi he ta se pas ta e kek di ku no mag. It's, it's just like talking to the kid, Diego. Yeah. They tell you if you can't go like outside. Everybody's going. Everybody's outside. going outside. Yeah, you know, they tell you you can't do this. That's exactly what go you're to gonna go and do. In the it was, uh, when we look at it, so we, you started. You know, we have a parliament uh, member that you know is like passionately. No, he says it openly something. that he uses marijuana. Yeah, I he's mean, he's passionately fighting for something. Yeah. But it's not. But we don't know what he's fighting for anymore, in the end, right? So no, he, says, he no, just no, we're, 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 I'm fighting for a multi-billion-dollar industry that's going to come to a yeah, but that's something. not that's then, not going to happen. The, then, then yeah. what what are we talking about? Yeah, in the end, right? Yeah, is, that's it, is that real? Is that not? You know, where's yeah? Well, he ran a com- he ran a com- campaign promising all his uh, voters that he was going to legalize marijuana. If he doesn't do it in the in the four years that he's there. He's gonna have a problem the next election, so Which I think next year. that's motivation enough for him to be promoting or to be fighting for the yeah, legalization of. But but so, and, that, and then there's this whole thing about medicinal. Diego, it's funny. Jesus, I mean, all of a sudden marijuana cures everything. It does. A lot of I stuff, mean, yeah. all of a sudden it cures cancer. 
it cures it cures uh, um, that um, those attacks the epilepsy epilepsy, epilepsy um, the, the, the shaking uh, the uh, Parkinson's, Parkinson's. Yeah. I mean and it's good for and it helps to cope with with pain and all ADHD but so repente and obviously de repente tore huma donan tambe bira doctor de repente so I want to prescribe and other prescribing we to everything to everybody and everything yeah. so you know it's and and wonder the con how come now there's such a push for it i mean in the last 10 years uh, we, i think they've been, the people have been actively trying to legalize marijuana for i don't know how many years 20 30 30 years i don't know since it's been illegal i think they've been fighting to make it legal yeah it just depends on, mm. on, on who. no international huh. local no local it's now no uh-huh. La- last yeah. Four years, but it became a, it, it became <coughs> a moral <coughs> issue. No, it, it's not really you know. There's the the hard data is hard to find into mm-hmm. how is how bad is this for you? Point. Is this gonna cause car accidents? Is this gonna cause brain damage? Mm-hmm. Is this uh, mm-hmm. you know if you're high are you a danger to others? That oh, but that counts for alcohol too, and yeah, it's legal. Of course, but so then mm-hmm. the hard data is hard to find. Of course, because, because it's been illegal so uh, long. And then there's a big moral argument that somehow, you know, a lot of um, different communities feel that it is immoral to alter your mind that way, even though alcohol is okay. You know, there's, there's a lot of gray areas there. And mm-hmm. so then what, what do you regulate? And in a place like Aruba, mm-hmm. and you look at the law and, and you see, okay, where, where did we get these things from? A lot of these things were just copy paste, no? It's sí, like, okay, no, I, sí, I, don't, I don't want to like think about it, so I'm just going to copy paste and comply with international yeah. regulations that somebody at some point decided something, without looking further into, yeah, is this the way we want to do it or not? But okay, well, okay so this is my. Pr- this that is same thing this we, is we talked about with the spear fishing. It was just a yeah. copy paste law. Let's comply yeah. with something mm. without thinking about it. Yeah, my problem with this is, for example. You s- you you get into trouble. You do something bad when you're drunk, and you do something bad when you're high on whatever drug. The per- per repercussions for y- for that person, yeah. uh, depending on what he was on, are so different. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't even want to start to talk about how many car accidents are caused by alcohol. I mean. I'm drinking beer, right? We are we we drink beer here, and I don't want to. I mean, sounds super hypocrite. I like drinking, uh, but it's a very big problem. Alcohol in Aruba big and problem. everywhere else is a huge mm. problem. Yeah. But I what, mean, what what are the priorities? The dumbest things I've done in my life, the dumbest things I've done in my life, I've done when I was drunk, when I was drinking too much. Th- that's when you do stupid things, you know. And then you do it when you're drunk. There's a completely different set of rules for you. And you do it when you're using any other drugs. You, th- it's it's harder. Jail. I mean, in Aruba, it's less harsh. But I mean, in the states, they catch you doing something stupid when you're drunk, or they catch you doing something stupid with a bag of weed in your pocket. You're going to jail. And you're gonna spend a couple of years in jail. It's a huge difference. How do you? Why is there such a big difference between this and the other? I well, mean, because in the past they did a very good job uh, lobby uh, lobbying and on brainwashing uh, everybody, alcohol and tobacco. Yeah, that's but what it, that's what what I yeah. said in the beginning. It yeah. depends who's using what. That that um, kota pone ki kota bira illegal, iki kota nota bira illegal. Pasobra si si. Um, it be so a minority group was uh, selling um, Viagra on the streets. It will probably illegal in, be illegal in less than a month. Yeah, I no mean, true. But the, pero it depends who's using it. Yeah, it depends who's making profit on it. It depends. I mean, the alcohol business so is a billion dollar business. Yeah. So actually, uh, the the cannabis uh, business is not doing a great job. <laughs> no. <laughs> they don't understand the lobby work. No, they're not doing <laughs> no, and but yeah, it's been demonized. No, it's been demonized. I mean, since the beginning, 
Oh, you're gonna get. You don't. You're not. You're not gonna be able to know what you're doing. You're gonna become this crazy person if you do this drug, and you're not gonna be in control of yourself. And you're gonna. And everybody's gonna be, be able to take advantage of you. So it's been demonized. I mean, they did a very good job in demonizing drugs as well. Yeah. I well, mean, I can still remember the posters they did here in Aruba. There was a. There was a poster. I will never forget this poster. Mm. There were four pictures of a young guy. And it said, Droga Tamata. And there was four pictures of this guy. And you, said, you see one. It was like, Un by Otro. One, two, three, four. And you saw him without, being, without doing drugs. A young, you know, nice looking person. And then you see the next photo where he's been using the next photo when he's been using more and then the last photo he looks like he looked like a zombie literally he looked like somebody that was dead mm. like almost a skull instead of a face you know and that's the poster they used to campaign uh, um, that father used in Aruba yeah. to campaign against drugs but it just depends also on what type of drug you know there's a lot of drugs that have high potential for abuse that people you know get really really addicted there's uh, not everybody's the same there's no, a, there are some not people that, the you know, that can, can get really hooked on a specific feeling, even if they say that drug is not addictive. There are some people that get addicted to it. It's just personality. It's just like uh, people that bite their nails, for instance. Yeah. yeah, that's not addictive, but they do it anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, and there, there are people that, that really get into this. So sometimes it can ruin lives. So it's no, more it about figuring it out, and, and it's ruined many, many lives. It right? definitely can ruin especially, lives. Especially, you know, especially the way the system set up, it ruins probably worse than, 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 than it could have the potential to, mm. to do, right? Okay. So I, I, ha I have this article I found, and I, and and I think everybody that has read a little bit about uh, decrement. Well, this uh, there. Um, maybe we should uh, talk about that too, Diego, because or whatever. Uh, decriminalization and legalization is completely different. But there's a country in the world, uh -huh. Portugal, exactly. that has right. decriminalized all drugs. Decriminalization means that if you are caught doing or carrying drugs, and it doesn't matter in Portugal which drug it is, whatever it is, from wheat to crack cocaine, whatever you're carrying, if you're not carrying a ridiculous amount of that drug, and I think they... They did a 10-day supply of the drug, but that's also very weird because who knows how much I use and how much uh, is my uh, my amount of supply, which is weird. But still, if you're caught with drugs, you will not go to jail. You will go into this program. They will a psychologist and a, and a, and a, a social worker will uh, talk to you, and they they what they did was in 2001. They decriminalized all drugs, and they, they made a promise that to spend all the money they were spending on the war on drugs, all the cops, all the court cases, and all the money that was going into putting people in jail was being on spent on helping people recover. Yeah. So they go into these programs mm -hmm. where they help them get a job. Yeah. You know, um, uh, if, uh, if you have a mechanic shop, and the drug addict is a mechanic, and you take him in, they will pay half of his salary, so you get cheaper labor. But the whole thing was that people felt like they had a purpose in life, yeah. and they had something to do, and they had people that Again. cared about them. Okay. See, so, And it's been since 2001, 19 it's years in the making. And it's less of a burden on society, even though we're spending money on somebody that uh, if you go towards yeah. you know the, the traditional thinking that person didn't deserve for me to help him, that person didn't deserve for me to spend my tax dollars on him into yeah. you know well, they're spending him anyways and paying all these things for him. But you're spending it anyways. You're spend jail and so also spending people, money. This is how we all think. You mm -hmm. know, no, mm -hmm. he deserves to go to jail. Yeah, but that cost me money too. Yeah, right. They but that's that's not there's not a direct connection usually somehow for no. for most people. Portugal is smart, but sobre um. Desde 2001, mm. cuando han implementado la e policy aquí, nan, radicalmente, drásticamente, mm. drops de e, e cifras de overdoses, que todo el lugar. HIV. HIV infections y e drug-related crimes, que todo el lugar. Así que, mm. 
Dordi a decriminalize isaki um na hay a hope positive outcome solamente arriba a nivel económico o financiero pero también arriba problemática social. na social que mm-hmm. está happening um Angela, healthcare time entre otro el, i mean every yeah. everything goes through there but then it really then it's it's more about sitting down and seeing okay wh- who is this harming how are we punishing who is the one responsible for these type of things are we punishing the guy that you know got hooked on something or are we punishing the guy that's getting that guy hooked on some on yeah. something right um are we you know making sure that the whole value chain put to put it that way that we have an eye on it and so this place when you get to those that that type of questions then you come to common sense right you come to into something that you can put into policy like portugal yeah. did and say why are we punishing all these people and spending all these resources when we can help them and at the same time because we're helping them we're we're going to be reducing some of the, the the demand that's fueling all this organized crime and all this other stuff that's you know that, that becomes very powerful just by having a little sí. bit more common sense and humanity. Sí, but it's not sí. just it's not just you're sending somebody to jail, but sobra once they come out again, they have been marked for the rest of their lives. I mean, Now I they mean, have I a mean, criminal jail, record. Jail is a nice university, no? Sí, obviously. But no say so. There, I mean, I how does no, this guy that's, that's ever how does this guy ever come back into society if you can't find a job because you have a record? I mean you still have the problem on the Biden prison and the DPN the Bakura the addiction. I mean he, you know he probably comes out even worse than when he went in. And Toyori what are we doing? We are uh, we are punishing them for having a problem. It's at the site on the camino um ko Portugal came focus on they 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 treat it as a disease instead of a behavior. It's like you are sick and you need help. Instead of you are doing something wrong, you're going to jail. You're getting punished for it. Yeah. <coughs> you're getting punished for something you did. Pero, mm-hmm. si boto wak en number nang, I wonder why the rest of the world hasn't caught up with what Portugal is doing. Yeah, the United Nations Convention on Drugs, no? <laughs> in yeah. the end. So when, when, mm-hmm. when you look at yeah. it, so uh, international, internationally, people start looking into okay uh, you know 60s there was a big issue you know after the wars we got together united nations and everybody started yeah. saying okay how are we going to get rid of all the big problems right yeah. and then at some point you know drugs became a big issue and then the world came together set up panels of experts to try to see how do we re- bring stability what are the big problems in the world and the united nations convention on drugs came out and started classifying different drugs, right? <coughs> Opioids, and cocaine, and uh, psychedelics, and all these other things come out. And then at some point they say, no, these things should be controlled, these things should be, should be completely prohibited, they bring no value to society. Mm-hmm. And then a panel makes that decision. The problem is once you put something somewhere, like any law, like, and we see it here, once you have something in a law, changing that becomes such a big burden for everybody. They're like, well, if we change it, we're second guessing what this original people did. We're second guessing this and that and that. And then uh, cannabis, is the, you know, being the, the one that's now uh, the moda. The moda. <laughs> <laughs> right? The moda. So that one you see that, that last year, you know, a few years ago, they started putting it on the agenda again. And people saying, well, you know, it's got all these medical benefits. It's got all these things that are there. It, you know, mm-hmm. is really not that much of a danger to society. We can use this or that. And then little by little, yeah. the lobby comes through. And then what happens is every time, you know, they have to, okay, well, now we've got to decide. What are we going to do with this? Let's postpone. It's too hot. It's, yeah. too, it's too hot a topic well, for, for, I, for a body as big as that. Mm. And so, the, you know, individual states mm. in the U.S. start doing things. Individual countries start decriminalizing. But it's not that mm. it's legal. No, Nothing it's decriminalized. Anywhere. No, it's not it's, legal. It's just, it's just not pursued. So there are... In a sense, I, uh, I have a couple of numbers here. Um, the alcohol, uh, uh, the alcohol Please. business, the alcohol uh, uh, economy, is uh, in the in the states is 70, 70 billion in taxes every year. Seventy billion in taxes every year. Bad, huh? I mean, and then I Maybe found this pull other. Up the numbers I here found on the this. Ask how much is the accents on uh, alcohol? I found this other article that says, but we never. Uh, checked or tried to figure out how much it costs 
and there's like this little piece here that says, uh, let me read, let me read it. The review study suggested a range of estimates, 1.3 to 3.3 percent of total health costs are caused by alcohol. So, a three, oh, at between 1.3 to 3 percent of health costs is um, alcohol. 6.4 to 14.4 four percent of public order and safety costs also by alcohol three point three to one point four per thousand of the gdp criminal damages costs also caused by alcohol one point zero to one point seven per thousand of the gdp of drink driving costs so car accidents alcohol caused by alcohol yep. also uh, caused by alcohol two point seven to ten point seven per thousand of the gdp for work place costs, absentees, unemployment, people not showing up Monday for work because they had a little bit too much to drink, for a total of between 210 to 665 billion dollars. It's crazy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an economy least, in its own. At least 100 times the amount that uh, that, that it's it coming, it exactly, from Texas. exactly. Yeah. So it costs wow. more than a hundred times what they're making in taxes, which and to me doesn't sound like a really good business proposition. I don't know. It's like here, for the a, planet. a lot of things cost us a lot more than we're making, but we have it just because it employs a lot of people. Well, yeah, and uh, yeah, I also found that. Yeah, so about there's one. There's a whole. It's a whole economy on its own. Uh, yeah, it is. You, you then are employing a lot of different people, getting you know all these things together. But the, the bottom line is that it's not regulated well, let's no. put it that way. And At it's costing all. a lot more to society than it should. What is, what is interesting as well, because I found another article, and actually it's in Dutch, mm -hmm. um, but it says over here, and it's making the comparison between alcohol and in this case, uh, speci specifically uh, cannabis. And it says that... Um, uh, in Dutch, een eerlijke beoordeling op deze criteria maakt duidelijk dat de risico's van alcohol en tabak zeker zo groot of misschien wel groter zijn als de risico's van drugs. Voor oh. um, lichamelijke schade, kans op verslaving en kans op sociale schade. En de artikel further explains indeed that uh, the impact of al alcohol for being addicted to it is uh, bigger than uh, on other drugs. Uh, uh, other yeah. drugs. Yeah. When, when we're looking at uh, here, <coughs> well, specifically for alcohol, we have special taxes for alcohol. It's a much higher tax than, than everything yeah. else. The exchange, I mean, if you're going to buy a beer here, buy a beer in the Netherlands, the difference in cost, only not is the import crazy. of stuff is, is taxes. So we yeah. are somehow taking into account that uh, this can be something bad, so we put a deterrent to buy too much of it and, you know, get drunk every day because it's super expensive and somehow collect enough money to to be able to cover those things. So when, when we look at it that way, it's a little bit more, yeah, straightforward. Mm -hmm. That, you know, how much is it costing us? How do we make sure that we reduce the use so it doesn't get abused? And, and yeah, and then... Have well, we do, it, we, do it, we do it with alcohol. I mean, we have we age. We can do this with others. Why things. can't we do it with every, everything else? It's, it's become a big moral argument, right? So with alcohol, it's our society, you know. It's you normal. Know, it's normal. It's normal. It's normal. <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> At the church, you can have some wine. Yeah. Right? It's just grape juice. It is, uh, <laughs> it's grape juice. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's something that that's accepted. Some of that wine was spiked. It's, a, it's, a, it's accepted <laughs> in society. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> some of that wine apparently before was spiked. But yeah. that, you know, there are different theories of how mm. that came to be. Yeah. And, you know, there were different drugs involved at some point in time. I, I, I heard this week something uh, super interesting about, um, I think it was like third or fourth century before Christ that uh, they found uh, they they do had this excavation of a of a of a Jewish um, community and they found a temple and they found uh, the place where An the altar. rituals were taking mm -hmm. place and the altar and the uh, and the um, different things that they had there and, you know, like we do now they had the incense going and just making sure everybody got a little bit of an incense and part of that tradition apparently they found this this excavation 
where they looked at the, the chemical contents of the ashes and it had, was frankincense mixed with uh, THC? THC and BCD and all this. So they were, you know, they they back been using in those days. Again, you know, the, the, it was part of a spiritual experience that somebody was having there. It was highly controlled because it wasn't just everybody go home and go... No, sm no. no it was, you know, go into a ritual... Go do these things. It was a religious and thing. And yeah, yeah. apparently, a lot of a lot of the religions in the world have been, you know, based in this type of ritual, mind-altering yeah. drugs experiences. Yeah. Right. All right. And those have evolved through time. Well, it's so inter it's point, interesting you say that because I, I think that. just like eating, uh, sex, and sleeping, I think altering your consciousness is also. Uh, something that comes very, uh, it's very, como do we say, innate. It's like something that, because even animals do it. Like dolphins uh, poke uh, poke uh, uh, pucker fishes enough till they get a high. Um, um, monkeys will eat uh, rotting uh, fruit so they get drunk. I mean, there's a, a there's a, there's a, you have, you have uh, my, well, there's a tendency to what? see, you see it's there's a natural. There's a plant called na catnip. Catnip, the yeah, the cats, 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 cats go get and high. Just, they really yeah, like so it. there is butterflies. butterflies are drunk. That's why they they drink till they die. Is that why butterflies they fly like were drunk. Huh? <laughs> that why they fly like that? Like that's why they fly like that. Yes. <laughs> so you you could say that it's another, it's another, it's a natural uh, thing to look for a, 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 an alteration of your consciousness to sure. change how you perceive. Uh, the, your reality or your world yeah. or your society. But on the other side of the coin, we're a civilized, orderly society where we don't want to alter, you know, we, uh, we, we regard very highly our conscious states. Because no, exactly. that's exactly <laughs> why they exactly. made everything now illegal. Now into a very yeah. interesting point. That's exactly <laughs> why they made everything <laughs> illegal. So okay. Because they don't want you to think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw th this is another uh, this yeah. is another little uh, uh, nugget that I found there on 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 you know when and how different substances became legal or illegal or controlled under United mm. Nations conventions, and then there was there was one that I found interesting. So LSD, mm -hmm. so you know that was one of the new drugs, and then uh, we talked uh, yeah. about uh, about the CIA doing uh, um, trials with LSD on on mind manipulation and all that, and then apparently LSD. It's a naturally occur occurring well, so thing. LSD, like <laughs> most, you know, molecules are out there, and you know, somebody just synthesized synthesized it. But uh, apparently, in the 70s, the USSR, um, together with like the, the yeah. Eastern Eastern Bloc, were the ones that asked for LSD to be included in the in the prohibited substances list. I would imagine. The CIA doing trials on mind control with LSD had something to do with it. Yeah. Beyond the, you know, the, 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 no, this is bad for society. People are going to get high or things like this. Mm -hmm. They were, I think, worried about what the U.S. was trying to do with these drugs. So it, I find that interesting that it's not, you know, it's not just how do things get prohibited or not. It's it, there's a, there's a bigger, deeper rationale listen, on this. Listen, Linda, listen. <laughs> there's a, there's one of the one of the reasons why they made um, a cocaine and uh, and those um, uppers illegal was because they did a test. It was a test they did with a rat. They put him in a cage and they took they put two water bottles. One water bottle was regular water and the other water bottle was laced with cocaine, and the rat drank the cocaine laced bottle till it died. Okay. And based on that experiment, they concluded that we would probably do the same thing. But then there was this other guy that yes. made this thing called the Rat Park that was filled with mm -hmm. toys and other rats that he could play and interact with and have sex and uh, run around and have fun. And they did the same experiment with that, r with that cage where they put the water bottle and the cocaine-laced water bottle, and they didn't even touch the cocaine-laced water bottle because they were having a health, healthy, meaningful life. They mm. didn't need to use the... If you lock... Anybody you lock up into a small box and put 
any mind-altering drug into that box, he will probably use it to alter his state yeah. of mind. But so that's I mean, part of the problem. A lot of people just lock themselves into their own boxes, right? Yeah. And then but they go into the. But what are we doing? What are we doing with people that have to help uh, them, that have problems that. with drugs? We are locking them up in a box. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We are How locking are we people up in a box if we catch them doing drugs, which kind of is the opposite of what we should be doing. Yeah, we, I mean, in, in, in overall, <coughs> uh, you speak of uh, cocaine, we just need to figure out who's doing this, why, what's the point of doing this. You know, most of the people that are synthesizing these drugs, not good people. No, <laughs> you know, but they're, that's because they're, they're it's trying illegal. to hook somebody. But that's because it's illegal, Diego. Yeah, no, I, I mean, in I, I mean, as long as there's a, there is a demand, there will be a supply, right? That's uh, you know, if, if 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 you decriminalize it or if you legalize it, because that's a step further, then these yeah. guys will probably be out of a job, yeah. and the drugs will be safe. People won't have to, you know, you. I, I don't know. I'm I'm scared to say um, things like that because I know how many lives drugs have ruined, and I yeah. and I get it. I mean, a lot of people die during this process. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible I because mean, it's illegal. Everything. Because it's illegal. Yeah. Because it because people have to risk their lives. Yeah. That that part I don't get. I don't yeah. understand. <coughs> and you know, at some point you understand like on the, the guy that's making a lot of money. He's you know. But why are people really risking their lives yeah. when you're in the middle and towards the bottom? Really risking your lives for nothing because these, they don't make the money. All these terrible substances to make these drugs out in the middle of forests, you know, they mm. put in a bunch of acids and all these other crap on this. And then you know, knowingly, you know, some, you know, just to make a little bit uh, more money, then yeah. they, you know, they, they will they do mix it. this yeah. and dilute with other yeah. substances just to. to to cause harm unto others it's it, what makes people get to that state that's a, yeah. that's a little you well, know I prob it's probably what makes people do anything else necessity probably yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they're it's probably poor I, I, I do also think uh, peer pressure because uh, when you once when you in to that circuit, it will be very difficult to. Yeah, uh, you, you, to you grow. I think you grow it. into it. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's those I people coming from those communities or from those um, those circuits where they were born into it. Like for instance, if you see here, I'm gonna talk about Rancho. If mm. you go to Rancho, it's the same kids that they grew up in are the mm -hmm. ones who are selling, and you see all these kids hanging at at this, uh, this specific house that is like a dealer's house and nobody does anything. No. And you see the whole family li family living there. Mm -hmm. um, the house is supposed to become a museum. They can't get them out. Yeah. And I mean, kids like yeah, kids. Emma's yeah. and Ziva's and, and Isa's age and they mm -hmm. hang there. So these kids, they don't know, they don't know any better. No. So for them, this no. is the life, the no. talk so life. Today I heard an interview yeah. of, a, of a friend of mine. <laughs> Uh, he wrote a book. Uh, he was he was a he was a drug uh, trafficker for 25 years, and they asked him a very interesting question. They asked him because he was uh, in the interview. He was trying to explain all the crazy things he had to do, like you know, he almost got killed. I don't know how many times. Uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a tough business to be in, but it's it's a business, and uh, and they, when they asked him. How did you get into how did you get into this? He said and his answer was very candid. He was like, It just happened to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just met this guy or this woman and introduced me to this other person. They offered me to do this one thing that led to another, to another, to another. And if you think about it, it's just like a regular business. When you start a business, this this is how it happens. Yeah. You bump into this product you saw in a in a conference in the in whatever states, and you think it's a good thing. And uh, you talk to the guys; they tell you, "Hey, I can help you get it to the island." And then you get it to the island, and you and you start your business. So it wasn't like he was born and raised into this very dark 
family and uh, then mm. decided to go do this. No, it just happened to him. And it's bizarre to hear that because it's such a difficult and cutthroat business. People die every day doing that. It reminds me of Breaking Bad. Yeah, it's al <laughs> al almost the <laughs> yeah. same thing. No, this guy was sick. <laughs> yeah, this guy was sick and didn't know what to do with his life and started yeah. doing the only thing he could uh, think of at some point to survive at some point people have nothing else to lose exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. But exactly. i think i think once um i i as he was telling his story i had to think of somebody mm -hmm. and um and it's it's easy money oh, because yeah. you don't have to work maybe 40 hours a week mm -hmm. You do one transaction a month. I don't know how easy. To I don't think it's easy. No, no, but I mean, for I mean, some it's people, it's a lot of money if you're in the right position. Exactly, but yeah. for some people, it's 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 in their it's wired in their brain that's for them it's easy money. They do yeah. this transaction once in and a month. That's it. Then they can live for a whole month without worrying about anything. And they can live for a whole anything. month, and then as the money comes in, little by little, you want more, and then you do more transactions. But it's not requiring of you to wake up no. at seven or six work. or five and work all day and i found this little piece it's, it's, i don't know if you guys want to hear it yeah sure i found this uh, little piece uh that talk uh ethan nadelman i don't know if i pronounce that correctly TED talk, no? no just a little piece <laughs> diego it's the that talk is called why we need to end the war on drugs okay. I think it's oh, obvious that it doesn't work, right? We, oh, I think, so I think we can. It's we it's all it's agree been a that experiment it's been. It's a failure. I mean, it just needs to be different. How much money? Needs to have common I sense. don't even want to ask how much money has been spent in this war, but it's ridiculous because they even have to put in the military to work to do to battle this war. And I found this little piece, uh, uh, and I'm I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I found this little. I don't know. And what we really need to Can do is to bring the underground drug markets as much as possible above ground and regulate them as intelligently as we can to minimize both the harms of drugs and the harms of prohibitionist policies. Now, with marijuana, that obviously means legally regulating and taxing it like alcohol. Uh, the, the benefits of doing so are enormous, the risks minimal. Will more people use marijuana? Maybe. But it's not going to be young people, because it's not going to be legalized for them. And quite frankly, they already have the best access to marijuana. Right? I think it's going to be older people. It's going to be people in their 40s and, and 60s and, and, and 80s you know, who find they prefer a little marijuana to that drink in the evening or the sleeping pill or that it helps with their uh, arthritis or diabetes or maybe helps spice up a long-term marriage. <laughs> and that just might be a net public health benefit. As for the other drugs, Look at Portugal, where nobody goes to jail for possessing drugs, and the government's made a serious commitment to treating addiction as a health issue. Look at Switzerland, uh, Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, England, where people who've been addicted to heroin for many years and repeatedly tried to quit and failed can get pharmaceutical heroin and helping services in medical clinics. And the results are in. Illegal drug abuse and disease and, 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 and overdoses and crime and arrests all go down. Uh, health and well-being improve. Taxpayers benefit. And many drug users even put their addictions behind them. Look at New Zealand, which recently enacted a law allowing certain recreational drugs to be sold legally, provided their safety had been established. Look here in Brazil and some other countries where remarkable psychoactive substance, ayahuasca, can be legally bought and consumed, provided it's done so within a religious context. Look in Bolivia and Peru, where all sorts of products made from the coca leaf, the, the, the source of cocaine, are sold legally over the counter with no apparent harm to people's public health. I mean, don't forget, Coca-Cola had cocaine in it until 1900. And so far as we know, is no more addictive than Coca-Cola is today. Conversely, think about cigarettes. Oh, this is the last Nothing one? can both hook you and kill you like cigarettes. Yeah. yeah, so nothing can hook you and kill you like cigarettes because we haven't talked about cigarettes at all. No. And it, I think and uh, there's a part where he says that, that uh, if you ask any heroin addict what was the hardest drug to kick, uh -huh. 
they hands down all say cigarettes. Yeah. But so that's the, speaking a little bit about common sense and public education. I think it's it's hard to find people in our society now that say, yeah, I'm going to go f smoke a pack of cigarettes. Different reasons. It made it super expensive. All these yeah. taxes are going to it. People are really understanding a little bit more about, you know, from an early age. We also made it not cool. Because it used to be very cool. I do see, I do see uh, different places. In the Netherlands, for instance, I do see that like a, a resurgence. A lot of people, Still young smoke. people smoking. Yeah. And then I say, what's, what's going on? If, yeah. you're, if you're under the age of 40 and you smoke, yeah. what rock were you hiding under? That you know that this is not good for you. Mm. That you know that, that, that there are no benefits because really it's just about being cool at some point yeah. in time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, they really made it cool eh? back in the mm -hmm. 60s and the 50s. No, correct. So everybody, there was a, there was a big every movie, every so movie, the marketing, the marketing everything had cigarettes in it. And it's not mm. as mm. big of a, of a taboo to say if that a restaurant doesn't, doesn't accept people that are smoking inside. Not that, anymore, you know, Diego. Not, not Do you anymore. remember in the but beginning? Do you remember I mean in the beginning? This, this people were less afraid. Than, less than 15 years ago already. Less than 10 years ago, people here, were afraid to people make were it complaining that they were gonna, you know, lose all their business because they can exactly. smoke inside yeah. of their exactly. places. Now even bars are not allowed to have yeah, cigarettes so inside. Not even bars. And yeah. it, it, that, that was there. When I they, think. when they, the when, when really got because this is interesting because this is a change. No, this is the problem. I think the one of the most difficult things uh, uh, humans do or don't want to do is change, yeah. because they are so used to to things the way they are, that they are very, very, very reluctant to change their behavior. Yeah. When, uh, and, and cigarettes uh, is one of, very on one of the very good examples. When, when, when we made it illegal, to, of illegal, when we made it not accepted to smoke in bars, yeah. all those bar owners thought that they were gonna lose all their business, yeah. and eventually it didn't happen. No, I think the, the problem that I see with cannabis though is that exactly that, is that pop culture is making it cool. You pop think? culture, a lot of, you know, every single rapper, every talks, single uh, raps artist about weed. talks about how much Smoking fun they had weed. when they were high, mm. you know, how, how cool it is to be high. Again, part of it is because it's... You're it's, not allowed it, to talk about this, Diego, you this. haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, it's... You're it's, not it's, allowed to talk about it's this. It's overly... <laughs> Sensationalisa. Sensationalisa. Yeah. Sensationalisa. How do you know that it's overly sensationalisa? How do you know? How do you know? I mean, uh, you don't know how, how I mean, right cool now, it or right how, how now, what it feels pop like. Culture, pop culture is making it to be like it's awesome, right? And these yeah. people are, and the problem that I see is that then okay. it, they, they're they making the it cool. They do the same with They're alcohol. making it cool for yeah. people to, to do it and then go drive. But with alcohol, we can at least test what's going on. Yeah, because it's been legal for all these years. Yeah, but I do also think, you know, I'm not sure what about you guys, but when I was at, uh, well, actually, Basis Hall still, mm -hmm. uh, they started offering me cigarettes and, you know, alcohol mm -hmm. to try, and uh, because it was cool. Yeah, I got and one of those faces. Nobody offers me anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody gives me anything. I I've got the face that Diego why. knows. Listen, yeah. listen. Diego, that whole um, myth that people will throw things in your drink, it's a myth. They don't. They keep it for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you think? <laughs> They're not going to waste their drugs on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. But I do think that peer pressure for yeah. teenagers is, you know, is a it's big thing. Yeah. 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 Peer pressure is. Peer yeah. pressure is a big thing. And I then mean, all of a sudden you're hooked, right? Because if yeah. you start early... But it depends because when I, was, when I was growing up, I didn't have that at all. I didn't, ha I didn't have friends that were... Uh, peer pressuring me into well maybe <laughs> maybe what well, yeah maybe drinking alcohol yeah. uh, they, they say that marijuana is a gateway drug I think I think alcohol is the biggest gateway drug that exists because it's what you it's what everybody because it's legal mm -hmm. is the fastest closest thing to go to to alter your state of mind. So yeah, people... It's, it's, it's very interesting what you say because, you know, um, when I grew up, there was a difference between uh, alcohol and, and drugs. drugs. Yeah, yeah. 
so everybody was talking about alcohol as as is it as if it was no drug or whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. And it's a drug. Exactly. It is. Yeah. yeah. But at that moment already And cigarettes the, also a drug. Also. Yeah. Also. Yeah. But yeah. we tend to take them out, out of that of category exactly. just because exactly. they're legal. Exactly. Because but but and this is this is interesting but aside to like uh, uh, people feel ashamed when they get caught smoking a joint somewhere whereas to if they catch you, you drink take uh, well if they find you drinking something somewhere, it's f- totally okay. Yeah, it would be very interesting to see because y- you guys are drinking beers. Uh-huh. What about if we were smoking, smoking a joint? Beer? Yeah, yeah. I w- uh, well, yeah, we b- they would probably they call they the radio station and shut us down they right they away. They uh, they, they made would? Elon Musk lose a probably. lot of money, you know, temporarily. Yeah, for a little bit. And because <laughs> you smoked a joint <laughs> on <laughs> the air. A, lo- a lot of money on lawyers, uh, yeah. SEC calling him, the stock yeah. price going down. Yeah. Just because he was, but and again, that that's part of what I'm saying. That it's being because it's being it's uh, been demonized. Elevate no pop culture is elevating it now. Yeah. This is well, the, this is the this is where I see no, yeah. a little bit of a turning point. How cool? I'm, how I'm cool? That Diego, I'm concerned. I, I'm concerned every about. advertising, every <laughs> commercial you see about a nice rum or a nice whiskey but we live is in about a class. But it's about being a cer- being so in a cer- being in a certain level of of society. What is that? It's this exact know, same that's thing. That's that. I, at least I am knowingly understanding that they're selling me that product. Pop culture is doing something different. In the mm. same way, where rappers are are elevating, you know, uh, gun violence, yeah. basically. In yeah, the in the same way that they're elevating. Uh, pff, uh, women women uh, uh, well denigrating yeah, women denigrating women or uh, you know or, or just this type of this type of mentality it's not right no it's that not right and part I agree. of it it's because it's illegal of course yeah. so you elevate it to another state where then you get mm-hmm. the and here I call the vulnerable part of our population mm-hmm. teenage minds that have not mm-hmm. been formed properly Diego. yet mm. when they made and that's alcohol where where mm. those teenage minds are are gravitating to when we were growing up uh, you know cigarettes were still not in that in that full on this is bad type of thing and so you know in high did school you ever smoke a people cigarette? were thinking yes in high you school. did in high school did you smoke yeah you? really in high school i never smoked a cigarette but it was the same thing it was it was like you know people were thinking and i i found it to be such a was it gross waste of time isn't it gross? Yeah. My God, that's if I, I smell the mouth of somebody that that's That's what I thought. Ugh, so I to me, it, it meant nothing. But <laughs> most of my, you know, so at, when I was going to college and starting college, that's the moment where it was started to be not cool. Yeah. Right? It, because but it what was, do you think it happened? Was already what do you think happened that it, that it went from being the coolest thing? You, because, dude, every no movie... Edge. Back then, every poster with a Marlboro man on the back of a horse with I a think sky the lawsuits cowboy. got to be too too big on the on the industry. I mean the lawsuits and the you know the actual you know, cancer that yeah. people, and people killing of people of this. and then the, the addiction in the U.S. saying, "Look, this is going on. We can't do it, this anymore." They said, "You know what? Are we gonna keep this? You know, pumping." money into advertising for this sad but you know what they did you know know what they did they just moved they just moved they they moved to africa they moved to south america but not with the same you know if you look at those uh, the volumes and the stuff they moved to india you know you know how many people in india smoke (laughs) it's it's shutting down uh an industry Let's bit say by progressively. Bit. I think that's what the that's what they that should industry have, did. They should, well, you know was what they that they were a little bit smart about it and they said, Okay, we're we're gonna quit investing because they, they don't invest anymore. Yeah. You know, you know what they should have done? They, they should have told Marlboro, you know what you should do? Just forget about the tobacco, just start selling weed. <laughs> uh, they yeah? uh, you know the, at the, at that point in time where you're growing the tobacco leaves, it, like if you're controlling the production of this whole thing, yeah, to switch over Everything that you already have, yeah, to this, yeah. Then oh no, it's it's already there, dude. You just have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, but but it isn't right because we we're supposed to bring a billion dollar industry to make it here because nobody else is doing. It's not gonna happen in Aruba. Forget <laughs> it. 
I just but heard that Colombia is, just got into the business. That in Colombia, is, they finally it got in houses. The, it's you know they're all in California has uh, yeah. hectares and hectares of greenhouses of all these things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I, what I find interesting is that we don't this type of copy paste type mentality, right? So here we say no, we got to legalize this because we're going to make a bunch of money because others are. No, others are. We're late to the game. We're very late sense. to the game. We're very late <laughs> to the game. You know, there are different states in the U.S. Canada uh, is like full on. But who's saying that, states. Diego? Who? This is the I saw a part who of the member that was running uh, for uh, government last uh, election. Yes, saying yes. This. And they were saying they were going to. But he's getting he's getting out. high on his own supply. <laughs> <laughs> no, not on his own supply. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem. But it's then. That type of mentality doesn't get us anywhere. It's more, no. I, I like what Jamaica is doing in a sense. Jamaica is not, not you know, unfortunately, you know, the uh. inequality and all the issues that they have there, but they played on their strengths and they played on, on you know, what can we do? So they decided to ha. make a market out of this thing. Well, no, so they they, and then they, they decided to go beyond that, right? So they didn't go with the, the, the thing. What are they doing? The, the so the, the, the Jamaicans decided to decriminalize and legalize, actually, um psychedelics they did yes so in jamaica you oh, have wow. you have these retreats oh that where i think you we have to go to jamaica where you go <laughs> where you go no they go there and then they charge people thousands of dollars people can to go do there. like a and then they have a spir spiritual ayahuasca. type of uh, ayahuasca oh, wow. or, or psilocybin mushrooms they go uh, magic mushrooms guided by Licensed psychologists and all that and stuff therapists Beautiful. in a super safe setting where people just go in there and try to reconnect with themselves because like you said humans want to like have this type of spiritual experiences for some strange reason yeah and well don't you <laughs> don't you want so to know the answers to all the questions I, I, no but it's healing I, right I've got don't google, you right huh i've got google no, but it's <laughs> healing. i got google but let me ask you then another question because you are drinking beer yeah yeah so why, why are you drinking beer yeah it's a mind-altering drug. It is. I, it's it's one of those things that I think it's just ingrained in our DNA. I think beer. Has no, been the it's first not thing ingrained in your DNA. For not before we could drink water, there was beer because water was not safe for drinking. <laughs> yeah, it was the yeah. only thing we could do. We yeah. would you know make alcohol mm. in this thing Enough so that it was. Hey, okay, before so that it was safe. Hey, so before I'm just making sure that this is safe <laughs> and I'm hydrating. <laughs> plus, Dehydrating, plus you mean? Completely organic. It's not completely organic. By bio, there's no sugar or artificial sweeteners so added hey, here. Not the way Rabbi Kuba, no, so but the Bissan of cannabis, not organic. But the more organic They're going to be pissed at you. I don't know. They, they, they may be using some pesticides. Hey, at least it's not processed. This is processed. <laughs> 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 GMO. <laughs> but can, like cannabis, if you're, the, and like you said, you know, it's criminal everywhere. So you have no control over how something got to your hand. And yeah. with beer, you do. Yeah. I mean, you go, you to, go to the you store go to and you buy it. You go to Balashi and you see like the strict quality control that they have on there. Yeah, but imagine if they did it with everything else. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's seriously. awesome. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> propaganda. Uh, yeah. Propaganda. No, paga. No, paga. No, paga. <laughs> no, paga. <laughs> no, paga. <laughs> yeah. Propaganda. No, paga. Yeah. At some point, somebody yeah. has got to sponsor us. No? Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm not drinking Balashi, by the way. What? I don't <laughs> so yeah um i don't know man i i i think it's a very um Sibawak, if you see it, uh, how old may yeah, i even if we, we, we you touch that spiritual thing and i mean it, i think and, and and it sounds conspiracy theory ish 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 but I think that this is one of the reasons why they made all these things illegal because people were getting in touch with uh, with their being, with their it's self, with the subconscious. and uh, learning things about themselves that they they wouldn't learn normally because it's kind of a kind of a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a shortcut because there's other ways of not kind of it is it is a it is a shortcut. <laughs> <coughs> but so uh, you can uh, obviously you you can do that. You can become spiritual by doing a lot of other I things. I mean, we talked about mindfulness, be, right? Yeah. And then I when mean, you, you get can high meditate. on your own supply, it's yeah. just by breathing and yeah. 
listening yeah. to your own self. Well, even, uh, well, well, even in those mindfulness, uh, these mindfulness gurus and guys. Uh, Is that Deepak and yeah. Jay Balvi? They all... <laughs> <laughs> they all, they all, and uh, and even and you know this because we saw this uh, we saw this podcast uh, that all this spirituality and all this alternative thinking and all these things come from these experiences with with uh, with with hallucinogen drugs. I mean, it's a theory, yeah. So yeah. it there is there is a big chance that that's yeah. the, that that's the case and it goes even deeper than that because there there's it, there's right? and that's the there issue. are theories that we evolved because we were eating that that that, yeah. that theory yeah. i find uh, amazing yeah. you know that's yeah. the, the, the monkey that got high yeah so monkey yeah. and uh, found some mushrooms and then uh, triggered that parts of the brain so that you know the, the, the yeah. psilocybin molecule or the DMT whatever he had, mm -hmm. it had on there triggered some connections on the brain that, that changed it changed it wow. to evolve that that frontal cortex that yeah. thing but right? we know for I a fact that. diego we know for a fact because now it's been researched that cannabis changes the, your brain structure yeah. mushrooms change your brain structure mm -hmm. um, mdma changes your brain structure dude they're using mdma to deal with ptsd yeah. they're using mushrooms to deal with depression they're using all these drugs that have yeah. been demonized for it's bad there's a 30 there's, 40 there's 50 years 100 years to Quant cure mental health yeah why would we and still do we know, why we didn't know enough. there this guy was on cnn showing this little kid that ha was having 50 seizures a day that gets one little drop of CBD. of cbd and lowers its the seizures to one or two a day. Why would we keep people from healing themselves, their bodies, their m their mental health because it's illegal? Why? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Okay. You know, I, I'm thinking about uh, the conversation yeah. and also about the things that Diego is is, is telling us, and I'm I'm very curious because um, there is an instant resistance in your voice and everything that you say mm -hmm. for drugs mm -hmm. except for the alcohol part yeah <laughs> so no. and cigarettes no, when you smoke them no <laughs> and this is the, no and, and and here is why where i say because no because there's, there's a law there's resistance no it's it's just making sure that people have a safe access that mm. people are you know you're saying you know i should just be able to heal myself Unfortunately, that's not the case. If I break my leg, I want to go to the orthopedic yeah, surgeon. Yeah, but this is different and kind he of can healing. Heal me, right? Yeah. And so you want to have some sort of professional and and you know research and evidence based yeah, type of things. Yeah, this is not so tangible. No, it's well, tangible. I, ta you're sure talking about, about that. You're so talking I think it is tangible, and I think you're so talking so about that's physical things, breaking a leg, no, 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 no. Mental of course, of so like course, course if you have a freaking so like you're hernia, saying, you have to get surgery. Right, right now, right now, there is a bunch of research that has gone on with uh, MDMA, so ecstasy, um, for treating post-traumatic uh, stress, stress disorder, disorder, right? Yeah. So soldiers go on to war, they come back, they can't live with themselves, they have mm. this. And apparently mm. this drug mm. triggers uh, empathy uh, and under controlled uh, conditions, of course. under you know supervision of a psychologist or you uh, know, a, a trained yeah. professional yeah, that can help guide people through the emotions and the things that, they, that they've experienced, they get better. They, they, you know, depression. Right now, John Hopkins and um, I forget the, I think Columbia University in New York, they are all doing trials on on psilocybin um, to treat other mental disorders, like yeah. you're saying, to heal depression. themselves. Depression. But the key finding of this is is that it needs to be in a controlled way. When yes, you look at what what has course. happened. Uh, we're not talking about recreational drug no, use. Correct. We're talking so about healing. So it's basically but making people sure are that not we getting the people are not getting the healing they need because it's categorized as an illegal Legal drug. Correct. And this so it's, is it's my problem with it. Well. So yeah. to me, it's, it's not. It's not. Stop. 
Okay, mind. okay. Now, I, I totally agree with you on this part because <laughs> I do think it is important and that guidance is important. Uh, this is also because I do think that a lot of younger people get addicted for this reason. There is no guidance no. Or whatsoever. And the um, is, uh, is exactly. And it's just exploring. And exactly. And exploring and, you know, want to uh, learn about all these, uh, these types of drugs and uh, whatsoever. Uh, so I do think it is, it is very important to have a good guidance uh, in this. Um, what I find interesting, though, is, is the fact that, uh, that I feel that there, because it oh. is, yeah, okay. So with, with alcohol, I feel the same thing. I sometimes get upset that I have to pay so much for a beer here. <laughs> Let's put that's it that way. Whole, uh, that's a whole when different I was, show, when Diego. I was, when that's I was living that's in because Holland, you're cheap. When I was living in <laughs> Holland, I would go to the supermarket and get all these nice Belgian beers, a whole crate of them for less than, for less than 30 florins. And then here I am like, okay, these little tiny bottles of Crappy. just uh, Pilsner beer uh, for, yeah, I think yeah. now they've gone a little bit 50 something. If you buy it in the right place, you know, it's, yeah. it, then I become like, yeah. I'm paying a lot for this, but I also understand, unfortunately, what, what gets to me is how that money is actually spent. If it was spent in the right way, what the saints that are paying for my beer, if they were spent on Helping making sure that people are wearing their seatbelts and making sure that, um, that, that, that there are less... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And so <laughs> to make sure that that, that type of things are taken care of, I, you know, I, I, I'm not against, you know, cops stopping people on the road if they're drunk. That should happen. Yeah. And that should happen with every other thing that we have out there. But it's mm -hmm. more about having common sense into why do we put a law or not into place? Why do we make something criminal or not there? Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. I think with, uh, we were talking about the ayahuasca, and I think that's one of those Don't things that more that and more... In the way of real uh -huh. reform. <laughs> Uh, like ayahuasca is one of those things that more and more gets romanticized and it's being romanticized in a way that we say no this is this is uh, something that that, so that is hey Elton what sorry, are you doing? sorry 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 <laughs> uh, it's, it's romanticized in a way that is that 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 gateway to to this this thing but it needs to be done in the right setting with the right guidance and all of these things and not yeah, because the problem is if we keep it also be the way it, it is. can also be done for fun Diego no, but it just can like also people but drink no, but to have problem, fun the problem is it can also be abused so exactly. there's this of course shaman, just like alcohol there's can this be abused. shamans in northern Peru that say yeah I'm gonna give you like a, a, a ayahuasca trip and then you know he looks uh, indigenous uh, enough mm -hmm. and, and then you die uh, trustworthy enough and then you die no they no but they <laughs> abuse people they of can course. Yeah, they, can, they can they can they of can course. they can when when you have access to something like this it's so powerful you can Diego. you can mold somebody's somebody's it, brain why do you so why do you to make sure that these things are done right yeah but not prohibit access to that because then we become like the government that is taking care of everything and it, the nanny state type of thing we, we also are, don't want these things we are right? adults we should have the right because we call ourselves free people we should have the right to decide on our own bodies and minds. I'm completely, complete. I, I get all, but the reasons why all these things are, are backwards is because they are illegal. If you, if you uh, make them legal, everything you're saying, if you drink your beer because it's safe, because you know it's right. been through quality control, you could do this with any other substance. Mm. <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. abai and look has you I was a treatment for sober it has to view depression yeah como no has un background check e caballero aquí está bebiendo diferente pildo nan en lo que puta and the depression y la gaya bis ko en otro bebiendo nada this is exactly what Elton is saying because yeah. it is illegalized yes. we, uh, it's so not there regulated is, there, is, there is no control exactly and, and, and 
real consequence to the guy that gave this to him because he's in the shadows anyways. Not un señor appeared. But it, it, and, and you know what happened? No, there was another. There's another story where the guy got really into a bad trip and he murdered mm -hmm. the old lady the that did. Yeah. And then the yeah. the pueblo, the the people of that uh, um, small um, community? community, killed the guy. They lynched him. Yeah. And they literally lynched the guy because he killed one of the shamans. Yeah. But, but I mean, yeah. all these things happen because it's not regulated. Yeah. This is the reason why I but think it's, it's much smarter just to regulate. I mean, hmm. if I mean, if, if we can go, deep conversation because even even people who are who are terminally ill, okay. you know, people that are terminally ill. Uh, there is proof, there is research that if you do uh, um, um, psychosyllabin, it will help you accept that yeah. you are not here yeah. forever and mm -hmm. you can go in peace and all yeah. this stuff. I go, I even think further than that. You know how, you know how horrible it is to have uh, a cancer that is killing you with pain and you don't have the right, your own body, you don't have to the right to decide over your own life. Because it's illegal to kill yourself. In I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of places on the planet where it's legal to kill yourself, Diego. A lot of people go to Switzerland. Holland is one I of them. Want, I don't want to say Holland is one of them. Yeah. Holland is one of Holland them. Holland and Switzerland. But Holland has been on the forefront of a lot of things because uh, I mean, smoking weed and doing ma magic mushrooms has yeah. been not legal, not decriminalized, no. but it's, no. they no. just, no. they're just, turn the blind eye and let Correct. people do that's what they want to do. That's, that's, the, uh, that's actually something that I wanted to get to. So we have Aruba, mm -hmm. part of the Dutch kingdom mm -hmm. with a huge Dutch influence with most of... Uh, copy pasted everything. Most of the but people we don't that, copy we're, paste that we're supposed we're to have in the, in, the, in the government positions or parliament or whatever. Let's say most of them went to Holland mm -hmm. at some point in their lives uh, to live uh, or to study or mm -hmm. to work or to do something. But here we have a very different approach to a lot of these things. So there is, there is a culturally different view into, into how you know, mind-altering substances, let's call it that way, <laughs> are, are seen. Except for alcohol, yeah. of course. Completely acceptable. In the culture. Cops will, now cops will drive you drunk to your house. Yeah. yeah. And I, if know. they stop you. Yeah, yeah. correct. So that's I mean, really? That's one of really. those things that I... But the lead. Yes. Super yeah. leaf, no? I don't Super know. Leaf. I, I remember... And if they find you sleeping on the side of the road, they will arrest you. <laughs> yeah. Really. I, I remember being stopped in, uh, in Delft uh, by the cops uh, without having anything, with baby seat in the back of the car and everything, just blow here because you may have uh, had one beer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that type yeah. of thing. Thankfully, nothing happened. And, I, you know, I wasn't drunk. You were allowed Otherwise, to keep going. You know, it was just that the amount of control is is much <laughs> higher there for that type of things than here now w i do wonder what would be the history of of aruba really and uh, josie maybe i look at you because i know you 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 tend to look at the history of aruba a lot is like what what did the people here used to do because if we we looked we heard this this thing about peru and the coca leaf you know it's it has medicinal purposes it's, it helps people that have altitude they sickness put and coca so on leaves in 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 a mix I actually buy with alcachofa and, and green tea something, and it, it, has, it has all these things in it for losing weight. Para yeah. quemar grasa. Uh, what okay, para quemar grasa. See, but yeah. those things. But but like historically, it's probably the what were they doing? Most it's effective diet pill on the planet. <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, the Mexicans they had the the the, the pe peyote or yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. right. It's 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 a cactus. It looks like one of our um, tunas. Basically. You know, the usage of drugs I'm sure on somebody the island was doing something. is another taboo subject amongst all the other taboo subjects we are talking about yeah. in this show. Yeah. I think so we should do a show about I think we should do a show about addiction. It's not or is it is. It is. More than everything else. It it is like more than pedophilia. The, the, o the, o the oh. only thing they are they are, the <laughs> only you thing that has been used excessively since forever would have been alcohol. Yeah. But if I have to that. compare Aruba and Curacao, which is our very close uh, neighbors, I think uh, drug usage on Aruba is less of a taboo than Curacao. And even 
and and then if you move over to Bonaire, even worse. In Curaçao and in Bonaire, it's a very, very, very big taboo. People don't even talk about it. It's very, very uh, hidden. And uh, in Aruba, I think uh, you I but why I bump it? into people smoking uh, weed on the streets and everywhere. The I mean, uh, huh? <laughs> <But> <laughs> to the beach bumps. No, but yeah, well, why? I mean, but, but, but why would it be more taboo there versus here at this very moment? Is it because it's it's visual? Like we we see more people doing it openly, unapologetically. I mean, so I think it's we because we are more Americanized. I think Aruba is more Americanized than America. Uh, the American society on this is very, you know, the taboo of drugs is high. Huh? See, but that's and a drug so culture right there. I mean, those kids are Europe doing Miami. everything. And especially the the, 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 yeah. the, the, the way the Aruba served at the, as that gateway, you know, of getting stuff from South America out into Europe, into the U.S. Yeah. Uh, we know yeah. all those things. Yeah. Well, it's... But your country it also because all those taboo t yeah. taboo t topics we're not talking about it and that's yeah. why it's called taboo yeah, yeah. because yeah. we know all that it's there but we're not talking about yeah. it yeah and yeah. because we don't know how or we we don't want to or you know whatever reasons there are but since we are not talking about it, and that's what you saw happening in the Netherlands. The reason why the Netherlands is at the forefront of all those topics is because it is being discussed yeah, yeah. And There once you start discussing it and putting people together from different mm. perspectives, then you yeah. start to understand each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I there's, there's a, yeah, that's awesome you say it, because I want to just say one small thing. Uh, there was this show I used to watch. It's called Spuiten and Slicken. Uh -huh. <laughs> where the, also. Where the, where the, the <laughs> presenters. Pre presenters would do drugs. Yeah live on the show so and talk about yeah. it yeah, that almost reminded me of jackass in the u.s almost. yeah but well, better than but these people were just hurting but themselves but how for, uh, but diego how about how do you kill a taboo that's the easiest way to kill a taboo it is the uh, easiest way is. to kill a taboo is talking talk about, about it, it putting yeah. it in everybody's yeah. face yeah saying this is yeah. and, and you know and and then again you also take away that that demonizing uh -huh. that that those f weird crazy stories that if you do this you're going to become crazy and then all of a sudden you see this guy doing it and he doesn't become crazy but you take away the stigma of the people doing it no like um if, if you compare like years ago uh, let, let's go back to the 70s or the 80s if uh parents <coughs> approaches the, the, the kid or the youngster or the adult using any drug they're going to be kicked out of the house yeah and the problem mm -hmm. is only going to get bigger and it's still the same yeah. i mean we are we are in the in 2020 almost 2021 <sighs> I don't think it's enable, let's see how we can get through this. But mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and, and I think that should be a show unto itself because I think we have to say, talk no? about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah I, I think yeah. I gave that example already one yeah. uh, once in the show, but uh, a couple of months ago I was driving uh, to work uh, before the Corona crisis, and you know uh, there are, are some uh, chollers uh, around our uh, in our neighborhood where mm -hmm. we where we work. And um, uh, always try to help some of them. And yeah. uh, some uh, one was laying down on the street, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" So I walked over to see, "Okay, is he okay?" And then mm -hmm. a car passed by, and shouted to me, "Hey, you should not help this guy. Yeah. Let him leave him there. Exactly, leave him yeah. there. Yeah, leave him." And I was like, "Wow, you know, Same. is this is how how we treat our people?" Yeah. Uh, exactly. It's because the, and, 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 and and does it work? No, it doesn't. Because by doing that, they think that the person who is dead, the problem is that they exist. Yeah. The person who has a problem, the problem is that they exist in our community. But in reality, it's not a problem that is more serious. But this is actually also, uh, you know, we get to the core of why we started Open Mind. Same. Because yeah. we wanted to talk about all these taboos. Issues. So and, yeah. and this topic is hard. So when we're talking about the pedophilia, all these other topics, we find people that are either... Uh, passionately fighting this uh -huh. and other people that yeah, are not yeah, passionately yeah. well uh, and and yeah. let's say 
that are that are rationally can speak about it and become experts in the subject and talk. This topic, it's we, hard to find an expert we, that we, is not that is like emotionally involved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's very hard to find a, a, you an know, expert that is not you know, politically or emotionally involved into this that can actually come in and say, you know, this is how the reason we're doing something and why we couldn't find it. I mean, uh, and I, I, I don't think would anybody would like wants to have, have an somebody opinion on, on it, you know, you know, yeah. like I, people I think, don't want to have an opinion. I think by far um, we are the four because we're on social media right now and um, uh -huh. on the radio. Okay. So we are opinion, so we're yeah. voicing our opinion. Yeah. But if you have this subject, maybe in an enclosed circle, people would have an opinion. But yeah. if you go further and even talk about it in a bigger group that might not be yours, it I actually think, you know, it, people would not say anything. If you, because somebody that can talk about it in the broad sense. If you talk about this with somebody that wants to do cannabis, the you know the three four companies that want to do cannabis and you know are trying yeah. to set up and licenses, this, uh, they're going to have a point of view, yeah. of yeah. course. But or you have you know on the, the political side, the people that want to have recreational use of it. But then it becomes very much focused on that one drug. Okay. But not on what are we doing as a on the drugs yeah. issue. Yeah, no, see, right? we, we have to start wrapping up. But I I really wanna I really wanna um, add something to this because um, mita kere ko um, besides changing the status quo because legalizing drugs would change the status quo. Uh, we would have to reform, change all these laws. Pero pero semper mita kere because that's on the on the legal part, parlamento, all these things, rules, laws. But on the personal side, like people, and this is where I think the hardest thing is gonna be changing people's minds because si bo awaro afecta de mo vida e de mo família dor e droga, but yung yu ka mori de un overdose of bo família war to kibra pa sobra ku um, but you tata ko tata alcoholic or drug addicto, that's it's kind of uh, and 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 what um, because this is what you brought up just now you you were talking about yeah but we have to protect the youth, we have to protect the we have to protect people from from what from themselves, pero this pa by back i panos komisa sera, I think that's the hardest part that's that personal thing because you will always find a mother that's gonna come to the microphone when this whole process is gonna start in parliament or whoever and say I lost my son or I lost my daughter to drugs how can you make this legal or how can you make this uh, um, how can you decriminalize this you are not protecting the kids but the truth is that what we are doing right now exactly. is not protecting the kids because they are going out there, they're buying it from somebody they don't know. They are running the chance of getting arrested and going to jail. They don't know what they're putting into their bodies. So how is that protecting the kids? And you know, this it's very hard because the mother or the father or whoever family has been destroyed because of drugs has a valid point they have a very valid point I lost a son or a daughter or my whole family because of drugs how what do you say to that there's not a lot you can say to that except that we have to do this better we have to start changing the way we are doing things because obviamente yeah. the way we are doing it is not working yeah no so yeah. To, yeah. And and we and the main thing that we need to do is we need start we need to stop procrastinating the decisions. Because yeah. I think in 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 the end a lot of the people that are involved in it on the day to day basis, you know, the, the, the therapists that are trying to help people, the policemen that are going out and, you know, putting handcuffs on a eighteen year old kid um that may not have done much yet and you know maybe leading him onto a bad life they know this has changed but they're just following rules that are there but in the end we're procrastinating changing the rules because this is what we have and changing it brings unknown yeah and we have fear of the unknown yeah. so what do we do yeah we have to you know take some risks from time to time yeah we do and that somehow is is you know take some risk use some common sense where we need to 
even, you know, taking a risk because once we start having conversations with people who were addicted, people who are using the drugs, they can tell you a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, and I know that from a very personal perspective, um, yeah. but that's something for another show. Yeah. Um, but they can tell you a lot about it. Yeah. So let's start having a conversation let's with them. Let's start talking about it. And let about them tell the youth about it. You know, yeah. what is the fun part about it? Uh, when does it become uh, a real challenge? Uh, when are you addicted? Uh, all of that. Yeah. It should be discussed. Yeah. Uh, on the drugs that are hitting us now, which are mainly recreational because yeah. they're the ones that sell, they're yeah. ones that could have some other type of purpose. We, you know, we're okay. we're putting in the same boxes, and that's unfortunate for for the development of our society, right? Um, yeah, because we're gonna wrapping up. Josie, okay, bomes, bomes, no, cinco wrap up sobre. By the way, Joanna, Joanna, tem um programa novo ao ano, chico, tá? Vai começar nem a despedir não. Que menos não pode react nos minutos a mais maneira antes, guys. Yeah, I know, I know. Because I'm, we have to wrap it up. Para mim, vou bem para mim que nós um será nos edição de Open Mind para esse man aqui não. Um, em verdade, o que é importante para nós a fazer é tópico aqui um tópico mais um visível, mais um más vivo de la comunidad, pero no solamente es así, um, no se comprende que por tapa hobby es tabú, tiene que marcar tu experiencia personal, pero tras de cada experiencia personal y cada persona que por ta, um, en el momento no ha quitado struggle en que adicción y droga adicción de el caso que no siempre tiene un motivo un tiki más grande que just el uso de peer pressure para que esa aquí, damos poner atención y va a ser no solamente blame it on the drugs of an amigo who has done it, a drug, who has a drug addict, but also that. Not to turn into a drug addict, but you choose for yourself. You can put it in my humble opinion, my humble opinion. But if you have an afterlife, the reason why a person is feeling like a little bit more deep, um, who other hand is putting them with a hand to use a little bit of the equation. Who is here? No, so we say an open mind. Who is here? The Egyptian here. The Jacinto open mind, Josie. Exactly, who is here? That's a wrap. Se trata de si cada uno de nos oyente en arriba Bo Superstation Canal 90, cada una persona con un live stream. Um, un saludo para Verónica, como también para Gino Siminda Geraco, también mando un par de comentarios bastante interesantes um, para el tema aquí nana. Y más que claro, si vos no has logrado aquí aquí, o vas a tener fracción de DJ y vas a tener back sample, vos puedes seguirnos en Open Mind Aruba, join the community, drop a follow, drop a like, para que formar parte de el impacto que Open Mind tiene. Drop a like. Thank you, yes. thank you Diego, um, thank you guys. <laughs> Share the love. Bye. Ciao. Don't change that dial.